Right then, there's one thing I have and one thing I need. I need a haircut. I, I have a Wheeltop EDS TX Wireless Electronic Carbon Road Bike Group Set. Oh, right. Let's check this thing out. My name, as always, is Luke, and welcome back to Trace Velo. Right then, while I get these unboxed, I'll give you the headlines. Wheeltop are a Chinese brand that have been making drivetrain components for bikes since 1951. So yeah, they've been around a while. Back in 2022, they released their EDS OX, an electronic mountain bike group set. So this EDS TX has been a while in the making. After L2 with their ERX last year, it's the second electronic group set for road bikes to come from a Chinese manufacturer. And it's offered in disc brake and rim brake, which is pretty cool. This one here is the top of the line carbon disc brake version and costs about 740 euros from their website. So about 640 quid or around 800 bucks. But full disclosure, Wheeltop sent this over to me for review. So bear that in mind if you like. It's apparently IP67 waterproof and can take anything from seven to 13 speed cassettes. Although you'll see something different later. Anyway, let's crack on. Right, the first thing that struck me when I opened up this group set wasn't anything to do with the shifters and derailleurs. We'll get onto them in a second. It was actually the brake calipers here. And yeah, they look very, very standard, right? And that's interesting because they follow the standard Shimano flat mount design. This is a similar caliper that you'd find on any Shimano group set, right? L2, with their hydraulic group sets, they avoided this approach. So let me grab an L2 brake caliper and remind you of the difference. Right, this is a flat mount caliper from an L2 hydraulic group set. And you can see it's got these wings on each side rather than the two narrower holes in the bottom of the flat mount caliper. And they also include a bunch of slightly odd looking adapter plates in the bottom so you can fit these calipers onto the frame. From talking to L2, the reason that they adopted this approach is because Shimano own a design patent, I believe, for that slightly narrower bolt spacing on the bottom of a flat mount caliper. So yeah, they, they, they designed it this way to avoid any legal trouble, basically. Wheeltop obviously haven't bothered with this. They've gone with a much more standard design. Maybe they've licensed this design from Shimano, but either way, it's, it's odd that L2 went to such great lengths designing a slightly strange looking caliper, whereas Wheeltop haven't bothered. I'll try and get some information from Wheeltop as to why they went down this approach. But yeah, interesting to see that they, well, they're, they're just so different. Right, onto the actual group set. And one of the first things that I tend to do with stuff like this is give, give everything a really good shake to see if it rattles. So yeah, minimal rattle, well, basically no rattle from the shifters, rear derailleur. Yeah, same again, no rattle there. And the front derailleur, yeah, no, no rattle either. So a bit of an odd test to do, but it does give you a good feel for the basic tolerances. And these seem pretty good. Visually, this whole group set looks really lovely, actually. Very minimal branding which I quite like. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see some black decals on the brake levers here just showing through. And it's worth stating as well, I've gone for the slightly more premium version with some carbon accents. So both of these brake levers are made from forged carbon, as is this top plate on the rear derailleur, that's forged carbon as well. And both sides of the pulley cage carbon too to save a bit of weight. The overall build quality for this group set seems really top tier as well. Everything just feels good in hand. Nothing feels particularly flimsy, if, if you get what I'm saying. So all of the plastics that are used are decent quality glass fiber reinforced plastics. And if it's not carbon, it's machined aluminium, like this arm here where it attaches to the rear derailleur hanger on the bike. This is all one piece of machined aluminium and it's quite a complicated shape. So that couldn't have been cheap to produce. And the gubbins, the sort of brains of the rear derailleur, they're kept out of harm's way here at the back next to the pulley cage. So durability seemed to have been front of mind designing the rear derailleur. Similar story for the front. So you've got a durable plastic top cap, but then everything else, the main body of it is one piece of machined aluminium. The swing arms front and back are aluminium as well. So build quality for the derailleurs does seem up there. The shifters, again, just feel really good in hand. It's obviously difficult to quantify and I'll need to put them on a bike before I can give them a full sign off. But just like the choice of materials, for example, the rubber that they've used on the shifter hoods. This is often an area where group set companies will cheap out if they're trying to save a buck, but not the case here. The rubber seems really good quality, nice and grippy, seemingly nice and durable. So I've got, I've got no concerns there. And just like, I don't know, the, the choice of fasteners that they've used, everything seems to have been designed and built with purpose. Nothing seems cheap, that's for sure. So this group set is entirely wireless and it's kind of a SRAM-esque 
system in that regard. There's no separate battery pack like there is for Shimano or L2 group sets. So you'll need to charge both the rear derailleur and the front derailleur separately, hence the reason you get two charge cables there. However, unlike the SRAM setups, you can't swap out the batteries. So you can see it's kind of screwed on there. Presumably you can undo some of these screws and, and put a new one in if the battery wears out. But yeah, that's the battery situation. Totally integral to the derailleur. So let me get these charged up, paired up to the shifters, I'll get that app sorted, and then I'll give you a shifting demo. Right, interestingly, I've just tried to get that app uh, installed on my phone and I searched on the Google Play Store it doesn't exist on here yet. So I scanned the QR code that they gave me. Hopefully you can read there, it says EDS app. And it took me to this slightly odd website where I had to download the APK. Hopefully you can read that there. So in interesting that they haven't yet got the, the app approved on the App Store, but I'll get this installed and see how we go. Okay, cool, right, all registered, signed up, good to go. Interestingly, this app is currently available on the Apple App Store, just not the Google Play Store right now, but I used to work in app development in, in a previous life. That's always the way it goes with new products like this. They tend to focus on iOS first as a priority because it tends to have a bigger user base for stuff like this. So I'm definitely not gonna hold it against them. The Android app ugh, is working, I assume it's gonna be approved and on the Play Store in the next few weeks. So um, yeah, either way, let's get this all paired up and try some shifting. Okay, right, they're all paired up, but it was a bit of a weird process because there are no buttons on either of the derailleurs to put them into like a pairing mode and the English translations on the manual weren't, weren't fantastic, but I got it done. But let me, let me take you through the process because it's a bit odd. So first and foremost, get the batteries out of the shifters. They're just underneath the hoods here. Pop them out, ready. Get the charging cables attached to the front and the rear derailleur. Pull the charging cable off the rear first and there's a little light right here that'll flash blue to say it's in pairing mode. Next, pull the charging cable out of the front derailleur and again, this little light will flash blue, but then this one here will quickly flash green to say these are paired and then it will start flashing blue again because it needs to pair up the shifters. Put the batteries into one shifter, it'll flash green here, batteries in the other shifter, that'll flash green and it is done. So yeah, a bit of a weird process, but now they're all paired up, let me show you the shifting. Okay, shifting, I've been playing around, seems quite nice. I'll have a look at the app in a second, but here are the shifters themselves. And you might notice one button for the front derailleur two for the rear. And that's because the front derailleur makes use of auto trimming features. So as you're plowing through the gears on the back, this will automatically trim the front derailleur. <laughs> Interestingly, L2 had this feature on their first version of their electronic group set, but they had to patch it out actually, had to patch that functionality out because I think Shimano actually owns the patent for auto trimming. On, on front derailleurs, but yeah, we'll see if wheel top can keep this up. But yeah, here's the uh, rear derailleur here. So we will upshift, nice and quick, downshift. Yeah, really, really quick. And the continuous shift speed is very good actually. And you can hear in the background, this front derailleur is automatically trimming. So let me try and show you that quickly. So if I move through the gears on the rear, See that? There we go, so it does automatically trim. And if I just show you the front derailleur by itself, so um, yeah, I'll click the button once. Small, small chain ring, big chain ring. Small chain ring, big chain ring, yeah. Easy, easy peasy. The clicking is, yeah, really tactile actually, and the shifts are quick and seemingly quite precise. Let me uh, see if you can hear the buttons here. I'll bring it up the mic. Yeah, so really nice tactile buttons and ergonomically, these shifters feel lovely as well, but you don't really know until you get them on the bike. Anyway, shifting seems good. Let's check out the app. Okay, so the companion app. Initially, I did find it a bit confusing because some of the translations are a little off, which you'll see in a second, but yeah, I've got to grips with it. It's, it's funny having to like review a phone app for a cycling channel, but because they're such an important aspect of an electronic group set, yeah, it does need to be done. So I won't do a full review now, but let me show you some of the features. Okay, so the first thing that caught my eye with this app was this casual mode, and I'm not 
a casual. So <laughs> click that. You can change it to competitive mode, which presumably is a race mode. You can see here that it will increase the power consumption. So I've had to play around with it. I, well, from what I can tell, it makes the shifts at the front and the back a little bit quicker, which is cool, but I'll change back out because I am a filthy casual. Um, and yeah, let me show you one of the coolest features. So you might recall that, well, on the, on the like uh, the press materials for this group set, they offer, well, it says that it offers seven to 13 speeds at the back. But if I go replace cassette, it's currently set to 12 speed, but I can change it anywhere from three speed to 14 at the back. And I've had to play around and it supports it all. So the level of versatility with this group set and the sort of equipment you can use is bonkers. Okay, so the other bits you can do, obviously firmware upgrade here, pretty self-explanatory. I can update all the software on all of the parts. Device shutdown is a cool one. So this is something that's missing from the L2 group set actually. Say I put my bike in the back of the car and I'm transporting it. I don't want to accidentally shift the gears while it's kind of rocking around in the back when you accidentally click the click the buttons because then it's going to like burn out the motors and just like mash into the bike. So I want to be able to shut it completely down, which I can do here. And then to wake it back up, you have to plug plug the charger in. Really like that. On the L2 group set, I actually have to, well, I end up pulling all the cables out of the, of the derailleurs just to make sure the batteries aren't connected. So I really like that function on here. The uh, initial calibration, that basically sets the, the window of where you want your uh, shifts to happen. So for example, if your chain rings are quite close to the bike, you can move the window of shifting closer towards the bike or further out and it will shift within that window. Variable speed mode is an interesting one and the translation doesn't quite make sense. So let me show you that. Right then, variable speed mode here. So first thing you'll notice is that when you click a lot of these menu items, you get this spiel. The, the video at the top is quite useful, kind of shows you what you're trying to do. But this language underneath, the English isn't perfect and it's a little bit confusing, but it does give you an idea of, of, of how to kind of achieve what you're, what you're trying to do. But anyway, you've got three options, gear shift, free setting and fine tuning gear. If I go into gear shift, this is pretty obvious, right? So I can basically go in and I can shift. On, on the app. And I can do the same with the front, so that's pretty pretty straightforward. Free setting, <laughs> any guesses what that is? That's basically where you can swap what the buttons do. So if I wanna change this button to do downshifting instead of up, I can do that here, and I can do the same with the front, I think. So fine tuning gear, this is an interesting one. So this is an area that I think L2 have done it slightly better, if you're familiar. But basically, this is where I can fine tune where the derailleurs hit to make sure the gearing is, well, the, the shifting is perfect. So if I go in, the, the first thing you'll notice is that here, to sort of tune, tune the rear, they're called files. So one file to 12 files, that's, that's gears, obviously. But the other thing, uh, one file, so first gear, that's actually referring to the smallest sprocket on the cassette, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's normally referred to as the 12th gear in this scenario. But um, yeah, anyway, the other slightly confusing thing is if I go in, you kind of need to choose an arbitrary number between minus 200 and 200 in this case. So I'm in, uh, well, gear one on the derailleur. I would assume that if I say punch in, let's put 150 and I hit sure, I kind of expect the rear derailleur to then kind of move into position so I can fine tune on the fly. But the only way that the derailleur registers that new position that I've done is basically if I go out of the gear and then go back in, then it indexes to that new gear. Well, that, that new number that I've kind of selected. So you can get what you need to get done here, but the implementation is a little off if you ask me, but you can do it basically. So all in all, the app, it's, um, yeah. I mean, you can get done what you need to get done here. You do need to kind of take your time and get used to it, but um, all in all, pretty good. It definitely gets a pass from me. Right then, the weight. So just for comparison, the equivalent uh, kit on the L2 ERX group set came out to 962 grams. So this one is 958. So it's pretty much the same. And just for another comparison, 105 Di2, the same kit is about 940 grams. So they're all in the same ballpark. What I will say though, is that these flat mount calipers from uh, wheel top, they will weigh a little bit less than the L2 one because they've got these wings on the side and that, those additional mounting sort of brackets that you need for them. So this will be ever so slightly uh, lighter than the L2 uh, ERX group set, but not by a lot, pretty much the same ballpark. So all in all, yeah, pretty impressive. The build quality seems nice and solid. The shifting is quick and crisp. The shifters themselves are small and ergonomic. And I've got quite high hopes actually 
for the waterproofing. Like I showed, both of the derailleurs seem to be sealed units without any buttons even, so the avenues for water ingress do seem limited compared to some of the other electronic group sets out there. Uh, but obviously, I'm gonna have to get it on a bike and test that out before I can be 100% sure. If I was to nitpick the one downside right now, it's the app. Some of the English translations are a little bit iffy, and it was a similar story for the manual that I downloaded for this thing as well. Like, don't get me wrong, great to have both of those things, and they do sort of function and serve, serve their purpose, but some of the phrasing was a little bit confusing. But luckily, both of those things are relatively easy to fix in the grand scheme of things, so hopefully they'll get sorted soon. But yeah, massive promise behind this group set, especially considering the pricing, but ultimately this is just uh, an unboxing and initial impressions. So let's do some testing. I'll be getting it installed on a brand new bike build coming very soon, so get subscribed for that. But frankly, it does have some pretty big shoes to fill actually. I've been using the L2 ERX on this uh, sort of bike behind me. And I know, I know this group set has had its problems and I've covered them at length, but it does seem like most of the kinks have been worked out. I've been using it all winter basically. And for the last few months, it has been completely flawless really fantastic shifting the braking is strong and confidence inspiring the ergonomics are lovely like really comfortable on longer rides and the battery life is great too uh, plus i've actually laid this bike down on the tarmac more than once and the group set has come out pretty much unscathed so yeah i'll be drawing some direct comparisons between this new wheel top one and the l2 erx so um yeah subscribe if you like this kind of thing uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode and that's it See you next time. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Ciao, 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 ciao. Right, <laughs> see you later. It's the bonus clip. Time to do do. Do do do. Right, it's the next morning and I've just come back into the garage to sort a few bits out. I've got my coffee here and I was, I was having a play around with the group set and yeah, it, it, well, it appears like the front derailleur is having some issues. So if you look at it, the position of it, it's quite far back. You'd think this was the sort of small chain ring as it were. So then when you clicked the one button that's available, it would then try and shift up into the large chain ring. But check this out. That's, that's all it can do. Like there's not another button I can press or anything. So it looks as if it thinks this is the large chain ring, tries to move into the small chain ring, maybe hits a limit on the software or something and then shifts back up. Really weird. Strangely, if I show you, the auto trimming function still works. So you've got the rear derailleur in the back there. And if I shift up a few times. See? So the auto trimming still works, but for whatever reason, the actual shifting on the front derailleur seems to be knackered. So I'll have a look in the app, see if there's a a setting I can recalibrate or reset and try and get this sorted. But yeah, I haven't touched it since yesterday when it was working, but yeah, it seems to be having some problems. Okay, so I'm in the app and I've been having a play around. The batteries are fine. This basically has 100% battery, seemingly. So I'll go in and if I go into this variable speed mode here, I can, I'll close that down. Um, I, can, I can basically shift here. So if I go gear shift, this is the rear. So if I grab the rear, I can use the plus and minus to shift, right? Absolutely no problems there. That seems to all register fine. If I go to the front derailleur, like so. So yeah, it thinks that it's in the large chain ring right now. So if I change, try and change to the second gear, which it thinks is the small chain ring. Yeah, no good. And if I press minus, has reached the minimum. So it, it thinks this is the large chain ring position. So I think if I, go into one of these other options on the menu, I can change that up, but it's weird that it's reset itself overnight. Yeah, really strange. Anyway, I'm gonna have a little play around, see if I can actually kind of recalibrate the position of this arm. I think I can do that in this initial calibration uh, menu item, but I, I don't know. I'm gonna have to play around with it, see if I can sort it out. So give me a second. Right, so in this initial calibration part of the app, I can go in and I can, change the position of the derailleur. So I think if I move it far out enough, like so, using this um, arrow here, I can maybe reset the position of it. So let's keep going. So that would seemingly be the large chain ring. So let's go back and then I'll go into variable speed mode again, close that down. 
close that down and then gear shift. So let's go front. Yeah, there we go. So now it's working again. Really odd. Let's try it with the um, with the buttons on the shifter. Yeah, now it's working. So weird that it would kind of reset its position overnight. Clearly a bit of a bug in the software right now. Um, but yeah, I guess that's just the way things are with early release uh, versions of kind of group sets like this. But still, a bit weird, seems to have been fixed, but there we go. So I've just been having a, a think about, <laughs> about this issue and it occurs to me that maybe my garage is cursed towards uh, electronic front derailleurs. Because some of you might recall for the L2 ERX group set here, I unplugged my front derailleur, left this thing overnight to do a bit of work on it, came back in the morning and it didn't work. So I had to kind of uh, problem, problem solve that issue. Similar vibes with this one here, right? So leave it overnight, it was working fine. Um, yesterday, one night in here, and then the bugs start to kind of <laughs> come out of the woodwork. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, it appears to be working now, seems to shift up and down fine, but it's strange that it would recalibrate itself overnight. Either way, I'll reach out to Wheeltop, see what they say. If they respond, I'll stick it on the end of this video. If not, I'll pin it in a comment um, underneath here. So do have a look out for that. But either way, it seems to be working. Strange quirk though. So Wheeltop did get in touch. They pointed me towards that initial calibration part of the amp, which I showed you to kind of bring the derailleur arm back out. No indication as to why it happened and it lost position in the first place. But um, yeah, I've tried desperately to recreate the issue over the last few days, really trying to catch the group set out, but no dice, the shifting is still absolutely fine. So maybe it was like an initial bug from the very first pairing something like that, but either way, it's absolutely fine now, so I'll give them a pass. If anything, it does also show the safety features they've got on the group set do work because it wasn't willing to shift too far and it kind of backed itself back off without doing any damage. Plus, the, the communication from Wheeltop was really good too. So um, yeah, I'm happy. I'll keep an eye on it, but it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Anyway, uh, enough of that. See you next time.